something that it occurred to me during the last session about the contrast between mentoring, advising, and coaching. And I was I was thinking about as a librarian the interactions that I have where I can have um, an interaction with a student, and oftentimes it's an AHE student, so I have this this extra level that's a little bit different in those instances where I'm helping them as a librarian, but I'm also you know an alumni. Um, but we can start out, almost all my interactions as a librarian start out as an advising type role. But increasingly, we try to end them in sort of a coaching type role, like what you're going to accomplish, this is what you're going to accomplish, and then you check back in with me and we're gonna like make sure that you actually get your work done that you need to get done. But in many instances, I get, and I guess you just kind of have to feel for it to, to see whether it's appropriate. The mentoring part can click in, mm -hmm. and that that's so you can actually have all three of those elements going on. I I think, and based on I guess the way I'm defining it at this moment, they can all come into like a single interaction in some cases. Yeah, but you can actually like take a look at one of those interactions, and you can actually kind of break it out between this was advising, this was yeah. coaching, and it's, in many cases there's some sort of mentoring in the middle or mentoring you know, on top of all of it or, or something along those lines where you actually start having those conversations that are a little bit more about you know, where are you coming from and, and all that. And if you don't do that sometimes, then you're very bad at advising because <laughs> you don't get it. You don't understand what in the world they actually need. I think um, it reinforces to me this retreat the power of a student-led experience. So I think in my own desire to be um, teaching or working with students in some way to empower their learning, I think it reinforces that having student-led things are very powerful. I was here for the last retreat there was. It was my first quarter of the program. Um, the last retreat out here, I should say. Um, and uh, it was there was a keynote. It was really exciting and all that. But it was definitely was not student led. And so I think um, I'll take that. The other thing too is the power of having a mentor, someone who inspires you. Happened at this. Um, we just were talking about it. Gabe was my instructor in a mentoring class when I was an undergrad. This is like a true story. Yeah, ironically enough. Yeah. And. Uh, Anyway, so we were just talking about that, and we both thought of that, but um, there was a, something that occurred um, in my life this week where there was something, an action that I saw Gabe do in a class that I emulated mm -hmm. because of the power I saw him do it. So I got it, so I was like, I hope I could talk to him, Jake, because I want to share with him how even all, like how many years ago was that? That was five years ago. Five years wow. ago, yeah. something that he did as my instructor. Um, how I rem it was so impactful to me that I remembered it and Gabe kept in touch with me after that he was very empowering of me as a student so he was one of my mentors and I can't believe where I am today he probably can't either <laughs> I kind of feel like one of the things that is nice to make explicit about mentoring um, is what the mentor gets out of it, that, that there is a reciprocal relationship in the way that I see it. So if you are mentoring someone else, that's a development opportunity for yourself because then you start reflecting on your own practice in, in ways that you probably wouldn't if you didn't have that um, that other person as a foil or that community as a foil to kind of see it in different ways and, and kind of be more objective about it and do that that reflection. So I, I don't know if that's what you mean by the community of practice, but that's something that comes to mind where I think when we oftentimes talk about mentoring, we focus on the mentee and what they're getting out of it and, and all that. But the, um, you know, like, so in the mentoring class, I got a lot out of it. I mean, it was a big learning experience for me and, and that's huge. And whenever I feel like I'm in a mentoring role, a lot of it is about me learning about how to be a better librarian in most cases because that's what I want to do. So, I think an answer to your question about community of practice, I think it fosters collaboration and what great creative work we can do together, whether it's solving problems or, you know, when people come together for a task, it's just a task. Everybody has their job. You do it, you're done, you move on. But when you actually can create a community of practice where you bring people around a common 
purpose or mission or goal, it fosters this collaboration, synergistic energy that, oh my gosh, like what could we create together? And I think it's very important in adult education because it's cross-generational and um, and all of us are passionate. Look at all the alum today, you know, that we can continue to work together towards things in the future. So, and just seeing everybody. position now as an instructor, I teach intensive ESL, and for my students, they're mostly high school age, they've never been to the U.S. before, or they haven't been here very long, so I'm fulfilling a lot of these roles, coaching, helping them set goals and to meet those goals, advising them on what they should do, referring them to places within the college, and also I'm having the same students quarter after quarter a lot of the time, so I develop this rapport with them, and we can talk about shared experience, what it's like learning studying abroad, um, what it's like in American college systems. So I see how that is in my job, all three of those things. And I see the importance of mentoring with students who have been here for a long time and the brand new students together in the same classes that they can help each other. And I think um, one of my goals now is to help facilitate that within my student population. Very way that we have our classes set out, like it necessitates mentoring. When you have students working together, collaborating on projects, it, it kind of organically forms. seem to be a whole bunch of different definitions of what mentoring actually is <laughs> and so everyone kind of has their own view of what mentoring is and that that's kind of what's really important is people finding their own um, bridge uh, or, or finding their own way with people um, to, to help each other and, and build that kind of reciprocal community but the thing that that I have seen that seems to be the, the core element of it is it's about compassion and just kind of like love for your fellow human beings and that that's kind of the most um, it, it's it's really great to see that I mean I feel like we're kind of calling it mentoring but really that's what it is it's kind of this building compassionate relationships in, in professional communities I think mentoring is very important you know we talk about mentoring in education but um, it's the new, it's becoming the new normal in industry too. You know, a lot of uh, organizations and companies are, um, they're, they're getting this idea that for employees to improve uh, the way, how they fit within an organization, their purpose, um, from, a, from a corporate culture perspective, Many employees feel like they're outside of the culture of that organization. And so what companies are, are leaders are deciding, uh, are coming to the realization of, is that um, we need to mentor um, these folks into the culture of the company. My company's doing that. My company, just like within the last year, six months to a year, made the decision that mentoring is that much, just that important yeah. to help people become a part of the greater whole. And so when you think about it, even within education, that's why we would want to do mentors, because it's to help people not only define their goals and purposes within a, within education and their goals that education they come to get from the education, but it is to also help them define themselves within mm -hmm. that educational experience. In the program, we train mentors 
who come in and they are part of the community colleges down in Seattle. Um, and as part of the community down in Seattle, they're able to connect and provide knowledge to the Low Income Housing Institute uh, residents. We provide training to give them the right tools to approach uh, diversity and intercultural communication. So they're able to connect and create a great action-oriented plan and some advocacy for the Lehigh residents to give them some computer literacy or whatever skills they might need. I think one of the main takeaways is that Although you might be mentoring, you gain so much yourself as a mentor, so it really brings it full circle and your mentee kind of becomes in a community with yourself as well and that's pretty unique because typically you think of the mentor as the one who's you know providing the service or pro providing the benefit, really they're gaining a lot as well.